Coach is Rick Stewart of All Access Coaching. I'm really excited to bring you this free video and make sure you hit the subscribe and like button down below. It gives us valuable data as far as what coaches want. And also, if, you can, if I can get to 1,000 subscribers, I'll start doing weekly YouTube clinics for free. And if you hit the like and subscribe button, you'll get notified when we upload new content. We're uploading three or four videos every week. So now, talking about how this all looks uh, when we get into doing uh, some of it, um, we talked about directions earlier. So how do we activate that backer and what does that look like? Um, what you'll see from us, and that creates a lot of challenges for offensive teams, is if we call south, we're going to set the point to the strong side. So in this picture, the pass strength is to the right. So the call is Rome. There's the activated backer controlling the C-gap. On this side of the picture, obviously you can tell we have an open C-gap. Okay, and the C-gap defender here is this linebacker. Okay, so we have two completely different C-gap defending situations happening in this particular picture. And the reality is that this being to the field, uh, this linebacker in the C-gap, obviously they're gonna block and handle that totally differently. And then we have the C gap with the outside backer activated on this side with obviously a force playing safety and we're playing trio. This is cover three. Now in the picture to the bottom of the screen, we've called East trio and the difference between South and East is East is set to the field. So here they put formation into the boundary, two receivers in the boundary, but we're not setting it South. South would say, set it to the pass train. That would be to the two receiver side. But here we said set it field. So we're setting it to the field side. Now against this formation, same formation, same picture, two different calls. Now we have a C-gap defender who can play heavy, who can play crunch, who can play uh, crash, who can stem into it. And so now the C-gap is to being defended in a completely different way. And this C-gap is now being defended by a linebacker. And the way that teams want to attack the C-gap is completely different based on which is the C-gap player. Well, right there, we have two really simple calls, set the point to the pass rank or set the point to the field, and we get two completely different looks against this particular formation. The same thing here, uh, we're going to get the same call no matter what, again, south and east, assuming this is to the field, the pass rank is over here, right? So who's our C-gap defender? The point backer. And again, he can play uh, crash, he can play crunch, uh, he can play uh, heavy technique. Over here, it looks like, uh, you know, we're also going to have an outside backer as the C-gap defender. Why? Because there is no split number two. There's no need to have a linebacker back there. So now both the C-gaps are defended by outside backer bodies. Obviously for uh, the offense now, the D-gap defender is an inside backer. The A-gap defender is an inside backer. And there's edges on both sides of the defense. And this C-gap is significantly more secure now we have other looks where that Sam is going to be in a nine technique and that C gap is going to be open and defended by a linebacker. And as a result, again, offenses have to make decisions. Are we going to check the play at the line of scrimmage to try and attack that? Or are we going to just try and game plan something that says, okay, we've got something that's good against both a linebacker inside backer in the C gap and an outside backer in the C gap. And now there's a lot more complexity to this site picture for them than there was previously. And then when we talk about uh, this look, uh, where we're saying south and east trio versus trips into the boundary. If we call south, we're putting the point to the pass train. Well, even if they put these three cats into the boundary, we're going to go ahead and set the point to that, which gets us a point you know, into the short side of the field. And we have a dropout C gap defending Sam, but we have an activated rush backer who's going to rush the quarterback on passes. And he's going to play into the C gap on these looks. And now we've got a nice ability to say, hey, there is no way to hit that C gap. And this is the kind of formation where, you know, you can run your uh, G schemes, you can run your one back powers, you can run a lot of different stuff at this. And now we've got an inside backer, and an outside backer, uh, inside backer bumped out. It's going to play the D gap. Conversely, you know, this look is not super optimal for us. This is East where we've set it to the field. Yes, we are really good as a C gap defender with the Sam backer. And we have an overhang. I mean, we're overkill over here. But when you look at this particular play, we don't have great D-gap defense. We don't have great C-gap defense. We've got an off-the-ball defender trying to defend here, right? So we would not likely call an East trio against this look. And this is why South exists, right? If they're a big formation into the boundary, formation into the sideline team, setting the front with no hashes involved, right? Where are all the people? Okay, now we put the point to where all the people is, and we attack that thing that way. Or we flat out set the point uh, with one of our calls that sets the point to the tight end. 
that gets us that C gap secured because right now we have C gap issues because we don't have any kind of surface here. So we're definitely at a risk of being out leveraged badly against this look. So we would probably never run that bottom right hand corner. East trio, point us to the field. Again, there's our C gap defender. We wanted to firm that C gap up. We've activated that backer. Here's our Overhang, and this is the beauty of being able to play multiple versions of cover three. We're gonna play three match on the number two receiver here with the safety. We're gonna play three match with the outside receiver there. We're gonna play match on the backside. So this is a variation of cover three. So this is not just regular uh, cover three, uh, country cover three drop people, but there's our C-gap defender uh, that we firmed up to this side. And again, obviously that's an area that if we were just gonna play a normal tight front, uh, this guy would probably be walked in the apex, maybe out here on the number two receiver. But now we've got an activated outside backer who's taking care of that C-gap. We've got an activated uh, backer to the field. The boundary side backer is the C-gap defender as well, but he is a drop player. He's going to drop into coverage. It's hard to tell, though, right now with this picture, which one is going to be in coverage and which one's going to be the C-gap defender, uh, which is one of the beautiful things about it. And what this allows us to do uh, is, again, now because we turn and chase, we're able to get a linebacker over the top. So you're going to see uh, our point backer is going to chase on the down block, rear block away. So they run away. He's going to turn and chase, which should induce a pull. Our linebacker is going to scrape exchange over the top of this. And obviously that's a drastic departure of most of the time these guys in our defense, especially when we're playing tight front, are playing shuffle type technique. They're playing for the QB. The QB's not got to actually read something, right? So this guy's not shuffling. What's he doing? His shoulders are turning. So he starts chasing. Oh man, I'm going to just pull and keep that. And ideally, he thinks, oh, I got him beat. He made a mistake. He's going to chase this thing down. He's going to try and run over the top. And there we go. There's a linebacker falling back over the top. Also a four eye falling out. You can see this four eyes dealing with that uh, cutoff block of 64. And he just slides back over the top of it when the ball is pulled. And we end up getting multiple hats to the football. But again, the C gap is being played completely differently there. More of the same. C gaps activated to the field. This is a East call. So it's London, London, London. We're playing trio. Uh, so this is a version of cover three uh, being played over here. And what happens now is again, co completely different scenario for these guys in terms of what they're getting. The idea, the idea here for them was obviously, Hey, we think that guy's going to be like the force type of player. And we're going to then read the four I and run this kind of like a midline type of uh, concept. Right now, ideally, we would like to see our inside backer here uh, not do what he does. Uh, he plays this. He should be, you know, this this backer should be ready to help fall back for that quarterback there. Um, we're not really playing it real great. We get kind of a mess charge from the four eye. But the beauty of this is, again, they don't know what that guy's going to do and how we're going to handle that C gap. Uh, so it's not clear, hey, or is that guy just going to run out with the motion? Uh, and I think that's one of the things they tried to do in terms of influencing us was motion this back out and see if they could, hey, pull that um, outside backer out. Well, sometimes we do that. Some call calls that we make do pull that guy out. But in this particular case, the adjustment is made by an inside backer who pulls out because the C gap defender is somebody else. And that obviously creates confusion for these offenses. They don't have good answers to it. You want it to be one thing and be static. But now all of a sudden it's multiple things. What's going to happen next? Here again, East Trio. There's our curl flat player, hook player, hook player, deep third, 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 right? Some version of cover three. You got a tight end wing here. Okay. So C gap wise to this side, we're in great shape for all the stuff that pulls back uh, to the open side, all the counter type plays and split zones. And you'll see this is split zone. Here he comes coming across. We're going to be able to go hit that thing and blow it up. And again, because that C gap player is not playing the shuffle technique that you might see in other situations. Here he goes. Now we're going to go attack it. And that lets us get involved and, and make the play. The zone can't just cut back where it wanted to. Uh, somebody didn't uh, zoom the camera in, it looks like. Uh, here you'll see this is formation into the boundary, like we talked about before. And we activated the guy to the field because this is a team that on film and in their breakdown and film study, we said, hey, look, they don't want to run necessarily always over here at the Y off. They want to bring this guy back across uh, on the other side. Uh, or when they do block away, we potentially will be able to chase it down from behind. And so they gave us uh, you know, that look where they said, OK, we're going to block to the side of the Y off. We were actually hedging here 
you know, for the idea that they were going to bring him back on split zone. So we weren't even thinking this was going to be the outcome. We didn't think with us spinning a safety down though. Obviously we disguised it a little bit there and hold it late. And all of a sudden now there's an overhang when there wasn't before. But again, that C gap player is normally like a shuffle type player. He's not chasing the ball. And all of a sudden now he's activated and going. And the C gap is a whole different animal for this team because we completely broke tendency. And again, this is something they have to always have in their mind. When one of those guys is up near the ball, he might be coming. Coaches, I really hope you got some great information from that YouTube video. Again, hit the subscribe and like button down below. It gives us valuable data. And if I get to 1,000 subscribers, I'll do free YouTube clinics. And you also get notified when I'm doing those YouTube clinics and when I upload new content to this channel. Thanks for watching, coaches.